Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at our lesson 10.5, Independent and Dependent Events. Today we're going to be writing down nine things in our notes. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to write down is what an independent event is, and they are the same thing as compound events. You're going to have two or more things that are happening, and they don't really affect one another. You're just going to multiply the probabilities together to get your answer. Um, whenever you multiply the probabilities together, you just want to make sure that you have your simplified fraction as your final answer, so just keep that in mind as well. Let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video. You're just going to copy down what's in the pink part, in the pink box, and then once you're done, click place, so we can go on. Number two, you're going to try by yourself, so this is, you're still familiar with this. Let's go ahead and try number two, the probability of spending a multiple of two and flipping heads. Go ahead and pause and try it. All right, so a multiple of two would just be multiples of two. So that is two and four. So that's two out of one, two, three, four, five. And then flipping heads would be a one out of two. So we're just going to multiply those together. We get two tenths. We are going to reduce that to one fifth. And one fifth is our answer for number two. Number three, very similar. You spin the spinner and flip the coin. What's the probability of spinning a number less than four and flipping tails? So go ahead and pause the video now so you can try number three. And once you're done, click play to check your work. Okay, so less than four is going to be the numbers three, two, and one. So that is three out of five. And then flipping tails is also going to be one out of two still. We're going to multiply straight across and we get three tenths. That is simplest form. So that is our final answer for number three. The next part we're going to talk about are dependent events. Okay, dependent events are a little bit different. They can change outcomes and they depend on one another, just basically what has happened. You want to make sure that you see it's happening after A. So for example here, if you're choosing a seat at the lunch table, there are eight seats now, and if one person sits down, there are now seven seats. So the first person has a one out of eight chance, and the second person has a one out of seven chance of picking a seat. So that would be considered a dependent event because something happened after the fact and the outcomes changed. Go ahead and pause now to copy what's in the pink box. Once you're done, click play, and we're going to go and try one. So here's an example of two dependent events. Or you and your friend are running a track event, and you randomly choose a lane one through six. After you choose your lane, your friend chooses the one that's left. What is the probability that you will choose lane two, and your friend will choose lane three? Okay, let's see if you can try this one by yourself. Go ahead and pause the video maybe and think about what would be the probability of you and then what would be the probability of friend and then you multiply them together. Go ahead and try that real quick. Okay, so you starting off, you do have six options. You have a one out of six option to get lane two, but your friend does not have six options because you've already chosen your lane. Your friend now has five options and that's a one out of five chance to choose lane three. So once you found that, notice how I decrease the number of the outcomes in the second one. I'm going to do one six times one fifth, and I'm going to get one thirtieth. So it would be a one in thirty chance that you would be able to choose lane two, and then after that, your friend would be able to choose lane three. Here's another one that you're going to try. You're going to find the probability of choosing blue first, and then after that, green. Okay, so you're not going to replace the first chip, so your outcomes are going to change. Let's go ahead and pause the video now to try number six, and once you're done, click play. Okay, so the first time you choose blue, notice there are one, two, three, four blues out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So your probability first of choosing a blue would be four tenths, okay? But it says, without replacing the first chip, you choose a second chip. So you've already taken one away, so that means your total outcomes are now down to nine. And then it says, find the probability of then choosing the green. There is only one green in this section, so that'd be a one out of nine chance. So now we're just going to multiply these two fractions. Four tenths times one ninth is four ninetieths. And I can simplify that. I'm just going to cut those both in half to get two forty-fifths. So that would be my answer for number six. Here's number seven. Again, let's go ahead and try a dependent event. What's the probability of choosing a five and then a seven? And it says without replacing the tile. So you'll choose the five first and then the seven without replacing anything. Go ahead and pause it to try number seven. And once you're done, click play. All right, the first time we choose a five, there's one five out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Okay, but the next time we choose something, that five is gonna be completely taken away and we only have six options left, but the probability we can choose a seven is still one out of those options. So to choose a seven would be one out of six. In order for me to choose a five and then a seven without replacing a tile, that answer is gonna be one and a 42 chance. So it's very slim chance, but it still could be a possibility. The last few you're gonna just determine if they're independent or dependent event. Go ahead and read the event in number eight, pause, answer independent or dependent event, and then click play to check your work. Okay, so this one, it talks about a number cube. You're just rolling the number cube twice. The first rolls a three, the second rolls an odd number. That one is gonna be an independent event because the first event does not affect the second one, and it's not gonna affect any of the outcomes. You still have the same number of outcomes as you did before. Go ahead and try number nine here. Let's pause it, read it to determine if it's independent or dependent, and then click play to check your work. Okay, so for this one, you're choosing marbles. It says you keep the first marble and then draw a second one. That one is gonna be a dependent event. The reason is, is because, um, I just misspelled dependent, good job, dependent. Okay, um, the reason it's dependent though is because it's affecting the outcomes. Whenever you choose that first marble, you don't put it back, so there's less outcomes now in that second part. Okay, so that would be considered a dependent event. That's gonna conclude our video for today. Thanks so much for tuning in, but just make sure you have your nine things written down and you know the differences between independent and dependent events. Have a great day.